hello <coughs> good morning students today we will start a new topic that is conjunctiva we have finished the leads in that sense we have uh, seen the entropion the abnormal positions of the lead margin but ectropion and ptosis i will cover when you are uh, in offline mode uh, so today we will start about conjunctiva so conjunctiva is a thin translucent vascular mucous membrane which lines the posterior surface of the eyelids and anterior aspect of the eyeball the conjoint means to join so it joins the conjunctiva joins the anterior part of the eyeball up to the limbus with this translucent mucous membrane the conjunctiva is richly vascular supplied by the anterior ciliary and palpebral arteries lymphatics this drainage to the preauricular and submandibular nodes corresponding to that of the eyelids this is an important point because in viral conjunctivitis you get the preauricular and submandibular nodes palpable so when you are diagnosing the case of conjunctivitis or diagnosis you have to look for the type of discharge then the response of the conjunctiva and the nodes preauricular and submandibular nodes whether they are palpable or not so this is a triad of a diagnosis of a conjunctival disease the structure of conjunctiva it consists of two layers the epithelium and the stroma the blood supply is the anterior and posterior conjunctival arteries lymphatics is preauricular and submandibular lymph nodes the parts of conjunctiva their parts are palpebral conjunctiva bulbar conjunctiva and fornicial conjunctiva the conjunctiva is rich in goblet cells which secrete the mucinous components of the tear film in my lead lecture already i have told the tear film so it the tear film is formed by the aqueous layer lipid layer and mucous layer the mucus layer is secreted by the goblet cells so this is the part of conjunctiva you can have a palpebral conjunctiva bulbar conjunctiva and conjunctival form in that the conjunctiva you can have a marginal tarsal orbital so this is a just a description the conjunctiva is the topic again uh, we can ask this for a short note so we are uh, about the the part that is called as the symptomatic conditions of the conjunctiva we have inflammation of conjunctiva that is bacterial conjunctivitis then allergic conjunctivitis and degenerative conditions of the conjunctiva that will be teria so generally we are asking for short notes this conjunctiva that is also a useful part in your viva also the nerve supply of the conjunctiva is sensory nerves that is branch of ophthalmic and maxillary division of the fifth nerve sympathetic nerves derived from sympathetic flexors bacteriology there are non pathogenic bacteria that is diplococcus and foreign bacterium jurosis and pathogenic bacteria they are staphylococcus streptococcus and pneumococcus they are present in the conjunctival cul-de-sac the bacterial growth is inhibited by this can be asked in your viva so which are the causes that inhibits the bacterial growth so you can tell that is mechanical washing away action of the tears bacteriostatic action of tears that is lysozyme and immunoglobulin a and immunoglobulin g they are present in the tears and low temperature of the conjunctiva it is due to the exposure to the air there can be physical protection by the lids and this flushing action of tears anti bacterial activity so this you can tell in your examination inflammation of the conjunctiva generally is caused by the microorganisms is the commonest variety and this is in spite of the fact that the conjunctiva has been provided with a natural protective mechanism so which are the natural protective mechanisms if in exam 
the sum of the examiner can ask you now why why you can tell these things vector growth is inhibited by 1 2 3 so we will see reactions of conjunctiva so the conjunctiva gives a reaction to the insert the insert can be because of bacteria because of uh, organisms because of the physical agents that is sunlight dust air all these can give a reaction so reaction comes in the form of hyperemia there can be discharge then there can be a membrane then there can be papillae there can be follicles so these are the reactions of a conjunctiva to an insert so it can be a physical it can be a chemical it can be because of the microorganisms so the symptomatic conditions of conjunctiva are subconjunctival hemorrhage and chemosis of the conjunctiva you will see in the next part and these are the degenerative conditions that is a pingicula and pterygium pingicula means it is a yellow shaped lesion that is a degenerative condition and pterygium also a degenerative condition that is a growth of a conjunctiva over the cornea so these are the important uh, things to know because that will be asked you in your viva examination and the tumors that is that can be asked uh, as a short note that is a nodule at the limbus that is a conjunctival rotation cyst and nodule at the limbus this can be a short note then diseases of conjunctiva that can be asked that is a bacterial conjunctivitis in these two pictures you can see conjunctival injection in bacterial in infection and there is a severe crusting of the eyelids in bacterial conjunctivitis so just uh, this can be asked uh, for a long question describe or discuss bacterial conjunctivitis and clinical features and management this can be a long question in allergic conjunctivitis we will see what is allergy and what is allergic conjunctivitis in that we have a vernal catar or spring catar this can be asked for a short note and there can be flactinular conjunctivitis that is also a short note so allergic conjunctivitis it can be a seasonal allergic conjunctivitis or perennial allergic conjunctivitis that will be dealt in your allergic conjunctivitis class then there is another condition that is viral or you can know that as a sarcoma this is an uh, infection the it is known as a ophthalmia or Egyptian ophthalmia that can be also asked for your viva and as well as for your short notes in the theory examination. Ophthalmia that is also a condition uh, before 28 days or after birth of a child before 28 days. So this is the ophthalmia another name is blenorrhea. This can be asked for your short notes. Now, the disease of conjunctiva, you can have a symptomatic condition of conjunctiva like hyperemia, chemosis, subconjunctival hemorrhage, and gerosis, parenchymatous gerosis, and epithelial gerosis, conjunctival pigmentation. The conjunctival pigmentation can also ask uh, for your short notes. So all these uh, things I have told that is uh, symptomatic condition of conjunctiva that can be asked for your short notes and they are useful uh, in the viva hose. So we will start with what is a hyperemia of conjunctiva. So passive dilatation of the conjunctival blood vessels without exudation or cellular infiltration. Without is the important word. Congestion of the conjunctival blood vessels without being associated with any of established disease is called as a hyperemia of conjunctiva. The eye looks red. The patient can come to you with the main complaint of redness of eyes. So it can be a transient or it can be a chronic condition. The simple hyperemia of conjunctiva means congestion of the conjunctival vessels. So acute, acute transient hyperemia. It may be acute and transient. So you can see what is acute transient. It results due to temporary 
it is due to temporary irritation caused by the direct irritants then reflex hyperemia hyperemia associated with systemic febrile conditions and non specific inflammation of conjunctiva the direct irritants can be foreign body misdirected cilia concretions exposure to wind and sun prolonged wakefulness refract errors metabolic disorders these are the causes of hyperemia of conjunctiva you can have a conjunctival irritation by smoke dust fumes stormy wind hmm? you can have a bright light extreme cold extreme heat and simple rubbing of eyes also can give rise to redness recurrent or chronic hyperemia that is seen in smokers chronic alcoholics people in dusty ill ventilated rooms and workers exposed to prolonged heat so in these patients you can have a hyperemia of the conjunctiva all the time the eyes will be red what are the symptoms by which a patient can come to you a gritty foreign body sensations distress because of redness all the time the eyes are red so he don't go to social gatherings because people are looking at him with the think that uh, whether he has taken some alcohol or something all the time his eyes are red so he can be uh, having miss or you can have a abuse of alcohol then chronic smoker even he is not or she is not in that uh, thing so this is a feeling of a distress because of the redness then there is a feeling of discomfort the congenital vessels when they are engrossed with blood they can cause a foreign body sensation because when the lids are blinking it will cause a gritty sensations there is a mild lacrimation also the signs are mild to moderate congestion of conjunctiva on eversion of lids is seen and more marked in formative so there is a homework for you that is a conjunctival congestion and ciliary congestion you have to write down the differences of conjunctival and ciliary congestion on which uh, points you can diagnose whether it is a only a simple conjunctival congestion or a ciliary congestion the treatment for the simple conjunctival congestion is temporarily by topical decongestant eye drops or astringent lotion like zinc sulfate and their cold compresses the cold compresses causes constriction of blood vessels so there will be reduced redness the hot compresses or the warmth will increase the redness so cold compresses the treatment for redness of the eyes it will have a soothing effect then another condition that is called as a chemosis of conjunctiva so chemosis of this is an edema of the conjunctiva is of a frequent occurrence owing to the laxity of tissue exudation from the abnormally permeable capillaries the exudate is retained within the mucous membrane which becomes swollen and gelatinous this is called as a chemosis in simple meaning it is edema of the conjunctiva so clinical features the conjunctiva becomes swollen look gelatinous the collection of exudate is most prominent in bulbar and formative conjunctiva and it looks like a collection of something inside the conjunctiva at the as the conjunctiva is attached to the limbal margin so it will not cross the limbus the conjunctiva is attached about 2 to 3 mm around the limbus so the edema will not cross the limbal margin what are the causes of this chemosis it looks a dreaded condition so there are local inflammatory conditions that is acute conjunctivitis keratitis corneal ulcer fulminating iridocyclitis orbital cellulitis panophthalmitis acute congestive glaucoma so orbital cellulitis panophthalmitis these are the dreaded conditions but in acute conjunctivitis keratitis and corneal ulcer that can be treated
local inflammatory conditions again acute dacryo adenitis acute dacryo cystitis again that will cause a chemosis then local obstruction to flow of blood it may occur in patients with orbital tumor cysts endocrine then exophthalmos then because of the venous stasis orbital tumors carotico cavernous fistula blockage of orbital lymphatics in systemic conditions that include severe anemia hypoproteinemia congestive cardiac failure it can also seen in allergic reaction that is drug allergy urticaria and angioneurotic edema so all these conditions can cause chemosis of conjunctiva then another condition that can be asked for your uh, viva as well as uh, theory short note that is a subconjunctival hemorrhage so when uh, you will be in the, your opd you can see uh, many of the cases of subconjunctival hemorrhage subconjunctival means below the conjunctiva so this is a condition that subconjunctival hemorrhage or you can call it as a ecchymosis of conjunctiva is of very common occurrence it may vary in extent from small petechial hemorrhages to an extensive one spreading under the whole of the bulbar conjunctiva making the white sclera of eye invisible this condition draws the attention of the patient immediately as in emergency but most of the time it is a trivial the conjunctiva or the it looks red it is a bright red the subcondyle hemorrhage is bright red it is because of the oxyhemoglobin formation the spread in exposed parts of bulbar conjunctiva so from the minute petechial to extensive hemorrhages you can see the subconjunctival hemorrhage the is it can be a, a trauma inflammation of conjunctiva sudden venous congestion spontaneous rupture of fragile capillaries local vascular anomalies blood dyscrasia bleeding disorders acute febrile systemic infections and vicarious bleeding the patient is without a pain or there is a mild discomfort vision is normal the subcondyle hemorrhage has a well demarcated area so you have to check for other areas of bruising history of anticoagulants you have to look for the blood pressure of the patient and anticoagulant status clinical feature you, in this picture you can see there is a edema of the lower eyelid as well as there is a subcondyle hemorrhage so the subconjunctival hemorrhage it can have a flat with sharp demarcation absence of inflammation uniform bright red in color and it is towards the limbus so these are the clinical features in this picture you can see it is chemosed conjunctiva it is a subcondyle hemorrhage totally it there is a bright red color so there can be a collection of blood in a quantity that causes the conjunctiva to bulge out so it is a chemosis as well as subconjunctival hemorrhage you can call it as a ecchymosis of conjunctiva in traumatic causes there can be direct injury there can be head injury in infective it is because of the viral conjunctivitis there or you can have a pneumococcal conjunctivitis or picorna virus conjunctivitis there can be a mechanical trauma that is a sudden severe venous congestion of head it can be because of the whooping cough bronchitis vomiting blowing the trumpet fits strangulation stampede accidents causing compression of chest so when there is a intrathoracic uh, when there is a increase in the pressure of intrathoracic or intra abdominal pressure there can be ecchymosis or there can be subcondyle hemorrhage of the conjunctiva in arteriosclerosis and hypertension when there is an increase in the blood pressure systolic blood pressure you can have a subconjunctival hemorrhage in blood dyscrasia there can be leukemia thrombocytopenia purpura hemophilia and 
there is menstruation is a condition at the time of menstruation there can be a subcutaneous hemorrhage that is called as a bloody tears so it is a vicarious menstruation that is bleed associated with menstruation is extremely rare cause of a subcutaneous hemorrhage in idiopathic and also one can uh, look for in a head injury subcutaneous hemorrhage appears late but the posterior border is not seen in head injury cases trauma is the most common common local trauma to the conjunctiva surgery subcutaneous uh, injection that can cause uh, subcutaneous hemorrhage so in this picture you can see the retrobulbar hemorrhage which almost immediately spreads below the bulbar conjunctiva it results from a retrobulbar injection so from the trauma involving various walls of the orbit so at the time of giving a retrobulbar injection so we are preferring peri bulbar block this can be a question in your viva why the peri bulbar block is for the anesthesia of the or local anesthesia is preferred because in peri bulbar block you don't have the chances of hemorrhage but in a retrobulbar injection as you are spreading the injection into the muscle cone there are chances of injury to the blood vessels and so there can be a after retrobulbar injection there can be retrobulbar hemorrhage and that can come uh, above anteriorly and you can see a subcutaneous hemorrhage in this both picture it is depicted the injection so the needle which is inside the cone it is a retrobulbar and the another needle which is around the globe that is a peri bulbar injection injury to the orbital structures when there is a fracture when there is a fracture roof of the orbit the subcutaneous hemorrhage is along the levator palpebral superiorities in the upper fornix and lids when there is a fracture of floor of orbit the subcutaneous hemorrhage can be seen along lower fornix and lids then apex of the orbit along lateral rectus muscle and fracture base of skull blood travels along the floor of orbit then to the fornix and conjunctiva generally it takes 12 to 24 hours to reach the conjunctiva from fornix to the conjunctiva so in all subcutaneous hemorrhage can be seen in local injury or fracture base of skull in local injury there can be posterior is seen but in fracture base of skull the posterior edge can't be seen the densest part is anterior anterior edge is towards the limbus color is bright red and onset is soon but in fracture base of skull you can't see the posterior limit it is away from the limbus and the generally the color of the blood is purplish and it can be seen after about 24 hours so if it is because of a fracture of base of skull and if it is a local injury you can see immediately the subcutaneous hemorrhage what is the medical legal importance of a subcutaneous hemorrhage generally when there is a trauma when there is algae stroke injury the patient will have a subcutaneous hemorrhage and the condition looks serious or grievous so when you are in a chair of a uh, officer medical officer in a government organization or any private organization patient comes to you he will ask for a injury certificate so you have to think of age of injury cause of injury grievous and non grievous injury because the condition looks grievous so when there is a subcutaneous hemorrhage age of injury you can say within 6 uh, if it is a bright red color it can be within 6 hours or you can comment within a 24 hours cause of injury can be blunt trauma so it can be fist uh, yeah, fist injury but you have to be very uh, clear about the injury if generally if the patient if the assailant is having a ring in his uh, finger you can have an additional injury at the lead margin so there can be abrasion so this is an additional point because by wearing the ring 
in the finger and if you are hitting the person on the orbit there can be septal hemorrhage as well as there can be an external injury the grievous and non grievous it depends on the visual acuity of a patient so one should not comment immediately you have to review the patient after another 24 hours or 48 hours to note the visual acuity by this is the medical legal importance uh, from the point of subcondyle hemorrhage the treatment is assurance lubricating eye drops generally we should not give aspirin vitamin c can be given also cerasopeptides to reduce the edema and whatever the cause treat the cause when discovered placebo therapy you can give and cold compresses to check the bleeding in the initial stage you can give then there is another topic that is called as a conjunctival pigmentation this is again for your short note the conjunctiva normal conjunctiva is a thin transparent structure in the pulvar region underlying scleral and fine network of episcleral conjunctival vessels can be easily visualized in the palpebral region and fornices it looks pinkish because of underlying fibrovascular tissue but the conjunctiva may show discoloration in some of the systemic and local conditions so red discoloration a bright red homogeneous discoloration suggests subcondyle hemorrhage later leaves brown pigment spot yellow discoloration is seen in jaundice it is because of presence of bile pigments grayish or black it is because of application of kajal surma mascara in females brownish gray discoloration typically seen in argyrosis at lower fornix iatrogenic pre antibiotic era trachoma patients using silver swords so this can be a conjunctival pigmentation a brown pigmentation this can be seen commonly as a non melanocytic pigmentation that can be endogenous it is seen a characteristic symmetrical semi lunar accumulation of brown or gray pigments in the sclera that is found in ochronosis incomplete metabolism tyrosine and phenylalanine in addison disease or chronic adrenal insufficiency again you can have a brown pigmentation uh, exogenous cause long term topical use of adrenaline in glaucoma patients may cause formation of black spots in the conjunctiva it is because of oxidation of adrenaline to melanin then melanocytic pigmentation so melanocytic pigmentation can be seen in conjunctival epithelial melanosis sub epithelial melanosis and pigmented tumors so this can be asked for your short notes here with we are finishing the conjunctiva the next topic will be the conjunctivitis it can be bacterial conjunctivitis then you can have a acute mucoperlant conjunctivitis mucoperlant conjunctivitis of adult and ophthalmia neonatal then you will have a allergic conjunctivitis just i told about this spring catar and flatulent conjunctivitis then you can have a trachoma and then pterygium so this is the uh, tentative program for this uh, conjunctival topic thank you